this is Yoni me Rajo with you and today we are again moving into the chapter Footprints Without Feet. This chapter is from grade 10 supplementary textbook. The name of the textbook itself is Footprints Without Feet and the name of the story is also Footprints Without Feet. This is the fifth chapter of the supplementary book. So initially we'll move on to who are the characters. Okay, but before moving into the characters, it's something which we have to know. Footprints Without Feet is not basically a story, but then it is a novel called Invisible Man. So it's a small part taken from the novel The Invisible Man and it's written by H.G. Wells. Everyone might be familiar with H.G. Wells, right? H.G. Wells is basically a prolific writer. We know the meaning of the word prolific, which means he, he writes a lot. He writes novels a lot. Okay, so this one, The Footprints Without Feet, is taken from the novel The Invisible Man. So we look into the characters of the story. As you can see, Griffin, Landlord, Two Boys, Shopkeeper, Clergyman, His Wife, Mrs. Hall, and Mr. Jaffers. So these are basically the characters of the story. Another thing what you have to know is basically Griffin. Griffin is a scientist and one more thing I mentioned over here, he is a lawless person. There is one more thing what you can uh, write about Griffin, that is he is also a brilliant scientist. Not just a normal scientist, but then he was also a brilliant scientist. Okay, so now we we'll move on to the story. So the story begins like this. The two boys started in surprise at the fresh muddy imprints of a pair of bare feet. What was a barefooted man doing on the steps of a house in the middle of London? So the story is actually situated in London and then what happened? Two boys. The story is beginning with this. these characters called two boys. They see a footprints. But the only thing is they could only see the footprints. They cannot see a human being. But they could see the footprints moving. Okay, and obviously it's muddy. If it's a tar road, nobody can see the footprints. As it is a muddy road, they could see the two footprints moving. These two boys started following those footprints. But after some time, they couldn't see the footprints. This is basically the introduction of the story. Now, whose footprints were there? Those were the footprints of Griffin. Now, who is Griffin? Griffin is basically a scientist. He's a very brilliant scientist. Now, what did he do? He was in a form of trying and uh, trying and performing new new tasks each and every day. So now, right now, he found a medicine. What was the medicine? Adding in so many drugs and that and this, he found the medicine. What was the medicine? The medicine was basically to be invisible. Do you like to be invisible? Yes, I'm sure. To do all the naughty things in your house without your parents knowing, you love to be invisible. So over here, this scientist became invisible. Actually, he could have given this medicines to police officers or anyone else. So it actually who wanted the help could have done that. But then, as you can see, as it written over here, lawless man. He started using that medicine by his own and then he started to do a lot of pranks. Now, what are the things he did we look into? So initially, there was a person called Landlord, his Landlord, okay? And what did he do? His Landlord, Griffin's Landlord, did not like him. So what did he do? He burned Landlord's house. This is the first lawless thing what he did, okay? So, the initial characters, two boys saw the footprints, tried to follow Griffin, but then he couldn't uh, catch Griffin as he was invisible. Then, the first thing what he did was, Griffin burned the house of Landlord. Why did he burn? Because Landlord disliked Griffin. This was the first instinct what happened. Now, the whole story, in the beginning of the story, it is happening where? In London. Keep this in your mind. And then what happened? The plan, whatever he did to be invisible, was happening in the wrong time. Now, why it was the wrong time? Because it was the mid of winter. You all know how it is, right? How it is basically in the time of winter. Okay? So, in the time of winter, what happened? It was extremely cold, really chill cold. And then he couldn't be away with the dress. The minute he wears some dress, obviously they could find a shape of a human body. So he couldn't do anything. So he had to remove all his dress to be invisible. But then as it was very very cold, he had to do something. 
So what did he do? He decided to go to a shop. And what did he do? We'll see into it. Almost closing time. And soon as the doors were shut, Griffin was able to give himself the pleasure of clothing. Okay, so there was some food over there. So what was remaining? He had the food, and he broke open all the boxes, and he was trying to wear all the dress. Well, the dress what he was able to. So he wore the dress, but then what happened? He slept because he had full food, and then he also had warm clothes, so he slept. He forgot to get up early in the morning. Now that was a problem. He also took some wine and sweets and everything. He was literally sleeping so properly. He was not able to get up on time. And then what happened? Few assistants found him. And while they were about to catch him, what did Griffin do? Griffin started running. But as he was wearing a dress, they could follow him. But after some time, what did Griffin do? Griffin removed the shirt, Griffin removed the pants and then Griffin started to move out. Okay, that was how uh, second time, that is how basically Griffin escaped with the uh, person. Now, the next person with those assistants in the shop. The next thing what he did is, he went to the relay lane, there was a theatre world. He thought, okay, now there should be something different. Okay, and it's winter time. So what did he do? He uh, went to the upstairs and then he took a false nose because he don't have a face. So he took a false nose and then uh, he what did he do initially? Initially he doesn't have a body. So he took some bandages and uh, took the bandages and he went it out up and down. So what did he do over here? He took the money from shopkeeper and he ran. And then he thought staying in London is not a good idea. So what did he do? He moved to the village of I pick. And then what happened? He reached there. So it is actually a very odd time because in London winter season is extreme cold and nobody goes and stay anywhere. So in that inn, they thought that this scientist was literally a stranger who would even get out of the house during the winter season. So who was there in the end? There was a clergyman and his wife, Mrs. Hall. Mrs. Hall was a person who was very, very, very talkative. Okay, and Mrs. Hall was so curious to see him. And Mrs. Hall thought that he is such a strange person. And initially itself, Mr. Griffin said few things. My reason for coming to Iping is a desire for solitude. What do you mean solitude? Basically, loneliness. I do not wish to be disturbed in my work. I am doing some work. Please don't disturb me. Okay, another thing is, besides, an accident has affected my face. That's why I have a bandage on my face. So please don't disturb me I need my privacy and he gave some money okay he paid in advance and Mrs. Hall wanted to talk to him but then somewhere or other Mrs. Hall just left like that now few days passed and after that what happened Mr. Griffin all the money what he had was completely over at last he had to admit clergyman and Mrs. Hall that he don't have the money but then he had to receive a check but and then he will return the money okay the next day morning they could hear some sound. What sound it was? They could hear the sound of uh, what the coins and everything. The chink of the money. Okay, they could hear the sound of the money. So they got up and they, they thought it was a, obviously a thief. And they quickly ran. Okay, they went down since when they went there when they opened. And they couldn't find anyone in the room. They were totally shocked. Okay, and then while they returned they saw Mr. Griffin's room open. Mr. Griffin's room, the day he took the room, it was always locked. He never used to open the room. But that day, the room was open. So, Mr. Clergy, the clergyman and Mrs. Hall thought, this is the right time to investigate his room because he's quite a strange person. They got into the room. They could see the things what he used to wear, the mask, I mean, the, uh, what, the hat and dress and everything. He was shocked. And then what happened? The chair in the room got started moving and a lot of things happened inside the room. I just read few things. They saw the clothes over there, a Griffin's clothes was all cold. Then they realized, okay, he has not been here for quite a long time. And the bandages on the face was also there, the whiskers were there. He found it was totally strange. All of a sudden, Mrs. Hall heard a sniff. He or she heard a sniff, okay? And then later on, all of a sudden, the bedpost came and 
dashed on her. Then the chairs were moving. All kind of you feel it's all hysterical. Okay, so all these kind of things happen inside the room. Mrs. Hall literally could. Mrs. Hall, Hall also said something. The chair was used by his mother. Okay, and maybe his mother has come in the form of the spirit and disturbing her. So both of them, clergyman and Mrs. Hall, thought that something strange happening in the room. Okay, and then they realized one more thing that. Uh, the burglary also has happened in the house okay and then it was known to everyone and then everybody suspected the strange scientist mr griffin okay because the thing was uh, he was quite strange and the strangest thing what happened is the very next day mr griffin paid the amount the rent it was at that point of time that things became so mysterious Anyway, what did clergyman do? Clergyman informed Mr. Jaffer. That's the next character. Mr. Jaffer is basically constable. Mr. Jaffer came in, and Mr. Jaffer always also had the warrant of magistrate. So he had all the right to uh, what catch hold of Griffin. Okay. Meanwhile, Mrs. Hall did something. Mrs. Hall went to Griffin's room and asked Griffin. When they came to the room, the whole chair, everything was uh, moving about. Tell me what have you done for the chair? Mrs. Hall was asking and questioning. But Mr. Griffin, as he, as we said before, he was very angry. He wanted solitude. He, who are you? There is a question. Mrs. Hall asked. Mr. Griffin did not like that. Mr. Griffin removed the bandages over the face, and there it was, the headless man. Mrs. Hall got so shocked, and Mr. Griffin started walking. Everybody shouted, "Headless man!" By the time. Jaffers, Mr. Constable, uh, Mr. Jaffers, the constable came in, and everybody were crying out, "Hold him! Hold him! Hold him!" But then nobody could catch him because the while he was running, he was removing the shirt, the pants, the whiskers, the bandage, everything he removed, and so that nobody could catch him. So that was the end of the story of Invisible Man or Footprints Without the Feet. So H.G. Wells is a person who writes stories, something of this similar, something related to scientific experiments and things like this. And this story, the novel *Invisible Man*, is actually very, very, very famous. The interesting fact is that everybody thought it was a witchcraft. Basically, seeing the chairs moving and the burglary attempt without any uh, idea of who did that, all thought there was a witchcraft. But then the burglary, if a, a burglary thing what happened, and then uh, the money what Griffin paid the very next day. All of them was totally mismatched. Okay. Anyway, in the end, they couldn't catch the thief. They couldn't catch Mr. Griffin. Okay. So that is where basically the story comes to an end. Okay. Now, uh, regarding the questions of this chapter, um, the questions can be uh, like Griffin was rather a lawless person. Comment. You can very clearly say that yes, he is a lawless person. Think about the things what he did. Initially, he burned a landlord's house. And then he uh, robbed the shopkeeper. He took the things from them. He robbed the clergyman. Okay, and then Mrs. Hall was scared because of him. And then Mr. Jaffers, he being the police officer, he was also made like a fool. So all these things very clearly can say yes, Mr. Griffin was a lawless person. And the thing is, uh, yes, he was a very intelligent person. He was a brilliant person. According to me, if anybody asked me to assess it, I would say yes. Mr. Griffin is basically a lawless person, but he was a brilliant scientist. He should have used this brilliancy for something else. That's one thing what I felt. Okay, about Mr. Griffin. Okay, this is about the story Footprints Without Feet. I hope you have understood about the characters. I hope you have understood about the story, the character, Mr. Griffin, especially because that is a shortcut question about Mr. Griffin's character. Okay, so this that's something which you have to look into. In the story, and I don't find I didn't find any much of the uh, difficult words over there. Witchcraft means you know right? What is witchcraft? Witchcraft means basically this magical spell and all right? Magic spell uh, you've seen in the whole in Hindi films or English films, right? Same thing. Okay, so uh, basically this is about the story. I hope it was clear to you. I hope it was clear to you. If you have any doubts, do post in the comment box. And please let me know your views about this. Please don't forget the previous videos. Please look into it. There are almost grade ten. We have covered already chapter one, two, three, and four of moments. And grade ten, 
the other textbook first flight many most of the chapters we have covered so please look into it if you have any doubts please post it in the comment box okay so see you in the next video with a new episode with a new chapter with new grade so, so until then see you in the next video you are Nimi Rijo signing off you take care stay safe god bless bye